Hey everybody, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is fun coming at you again with an interesting task here. Instead of Excel today, we're going to use Google Sheets. And with the real estate boom going on right now and rates being so incredibly low, everybody and their mom is looking for a home to purchase. In fact, I get alerts daily from Zillow and Realtor and I enjoy perusing new homes coming on the market. But one thing that I like to do besides the obvious number crunching I obsessively do whenever I'm looking at a potential new home is I like to see how far away the new place is to everywhere else. Location, 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 right? So instead of doing this about a hundred times a week on my phone, which is what I was doing, it's really hard and annoying. So I devised a little program in Google Sheets using a simple custom function thanks to an archived blog post that I read about from Alex Chapman, and I'll show you that really quick. On his gadgetappshacks.com, he showed us how to calculate distances between two locations using Google Spreadsheet. This is an older article coming from 2014, however it still applies to us today. I want to break it down in our video today and show you exactly how it works so you can tweak and do whatever you want with that. Alex shows us the basics of taking the Maps API and using it to get the number of miles or the number of seconds which we're going to convert to minutes in a custom function from one location to the other. Obviously the origin and you have the destination as well. So I want to try to break this down, how this works, so that you can tweak it and make it your own. Uh, make your own sheets from this technology. And don't worry whenever I say API, sometimes it sounds a little intimidating. It's not scary. It's actually built into the Google app script language and you don't have to install anything or have any API keys or generate any of that. All you need is a free Google account or you know Gmail or a Google Suite which is a premium account. Let's go ahead and dive in enough blathering on. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and access what is essentially like the Visual Basics Editor when you're working with Excel VBA, but instead you're going to go to Tools and you're going to go to the Script Editor. So if this is your first time on that particular workbook, that particular Google Sheet using that, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have one script file only. I treat that like a module in uh, Excel VBA. Then you're going to have an untitled project. You can name that. We'll call this one Google distance or get distance, something like that, whatever you want to call that. I'm going to rename it. And you have an example function that has absolutely no parameters and absolutely no code. So that's what we're going to either tweak or we can just erase this and start from scratch if you want to type function and then give it a function name. I'll just double click here and we're going to give this a name of, we're going to get, you can either say get Google seconds, or let's just say get seconds so it's easier to type. We're not going to put any parameters to start. We're going to start off real basic. So inside this function, we're going to put, first of all, we're going to declare our first variable, and at the same time, we're going to set the variable. To do that in JavaScript or Google Scripts API, you have to type the word var. So var spacebar, and we're going to call this one. You could call it directions. You could call it, you know, obj uh, maps whatever you want to call it. We'll just call it directions uh, because that's pretty easy to understand what this does. So we're going to declare a variable called directions. It's an object variable and it's going to be equal to this. We're going to take capital M APS maps. That's the Google Maps API. Maps dot and we're going to get a new direction finder. So go ahead and hit tab once it auto fills there and open and close your parentheses. This creates a new object. But we're not going to do our semicolon to end the line yet. We're going to keep it going. Now you can either do it one of two ways. You can keep it going on the same line by typing dot whatever dot whatever dot whatever or you can hit enter and hit dot whatever dot whatever. It's fine either way but the sentence ends officially when you put a semicolon. And it doesn't end until that point. That's JavaScript for you. So uh, let's go ahead and continue on and then we can actually make it look a little bit neater in a minute. So I just want to show you, you do the maps.new direction finder. We want to set some parameters. We need to set the origin and the destination. So you can do it, like I said, on the next line, or you can do it right here. I'm just going to show you both ways. So first of all, dot set origin. There it is. I'm going to hit down and hit tab. Set origin. That's going to be the starting location. So I'm going to open up my parentheses. I'm just going to type an address in quotes. So for example, 1400 Maine in Scott City, Missouri. It's real basic, but Google Maps is pretty intuitive at picking up the actual real address from that crappy address. Then you could also do dot set destination. 
So set D, here it is, set destination. And we're going to say, I don't know the, the actual address of my gym, but I know it's called Jackson Health Point Fitness. And I'll just put comma Jackson Mo. Okay, that's my gym. And then, so that's the first parameter, the second parameter. You can keep stringing it on until you do your final command. Your final command is going to be dot get directions. And then we'll do opening and closing parentheses. And now let's end that sentence. You can use a semicolon and bam, the first sentence is set. Now, I like to make this a little neater looking. So what I would actually have done realistically is just not put the semicolon right here, which would end the sentence, and just keep the sentence flowing on the next line so it's actually legible. So dot set origin to this, and dot set destination to this, and then finally we're going to get the directions, and then we have the period, so to speak, the end of the sentence, which is a semicolon. I just wanted to stress the point that this is all daisy changed to the same entry using the periods. So we go ahead and test this. Since we have hard-coded data, we have a hard-coded address here and a hard-coded address there, no variables there, we could actually do the logger.log, which is kind of like debug.print. So I'm going to do slash slash, which is a comment in JavaScript, and I'm going to say uh, basically debug.print or print to the log screen, and that's what this does. Now, you can't say lowercase logger. You have to do an uppercase logger. So logger.log, this is your debugging screen. And we're going to debug, let's open parentheses, and let's do the final thing that we need to do with this directions that we just created. We created a variable, an object variable called directions, that sets this whole thing into motion and grabs the directions. But now we need to take the directions variable and do a little bit more. So now that we've gotten the directions inside our directions variable, we can now take the directions, I'm going to hit tab, dot routes. Now for some reason this doesn't have IntelliSense, so you just have to know it. So directions dot routes, we're going to do an open square bracket, route number zero, assuming that is the first or only route that we're going to choose, or the most efficient route that comes to the top. So route number zero, dot, and then legs, we're going to say dot legs, and we're also going to use zero. And in our case, we don't have any separate legs or any waypoints in our route, so legs is going to be zero. Then we're going to take the dot duration. Because we're wanting to know the number of seconds and not an actual uh, number of distance, we're going to say the duration. And let's get the dot text so you can see the difference between the text and the value. And what are we missing? Can anybody see it? If you're familiar with web stuff, you know that we're missing the end of the sentence, and that's why it would freak out if we debugged or if we ran this. I'm going to go ahead and click Save, Save My Project, and now we can test this. We're not actually going to put a function inside a cell just yet. Let's just go ahead and run this and see if it runs smoothly. So we haven't got any errors. Executing started and completed with no errors. Now the text that we just uh, logger dot logged or printed says 21 minutes. That's not a number, is it? No, it's the dot text of the duration. So let's change this to value instead of duration dot text. Instead of 21 mins, let's see what this does. Okay. Perfect. This actually gives us the number of seconds, 1,284 seconds, which is apparently 21 minutes, give or take. So we could easily create a function that divides that by 60 to give us the number of minutes. That would be simple. Now, what if I wanted to not necessarily log this or print this to the execution logger right here? What if I wanted to actually just get or return the value from the function into our actual cell that we wanted to use or inside this script editor? In VBA, we say the name of the function, so get seconds equals, and then we would take whatever the answer that we want to return. In this case, since we're using JavaScript, we're just going to say return. So I'm going to comment out the word logger.log. We're not actually going to log this. And now I'm going to hit tab, and I'm going to do two slashes for a comment. In this comment, we're actually just going to return the value that we needed. So let's use return spacebar, and I'm going to copy and paste this so I don't have to type it all again. Return directions.routes0, zero, leg0.duration.value. Zero dot dot now, what am I missing? You got it. We're once again missing the end of the sentence, which is the semicolon. That'll, that always gets me. 
whenever I'm doing any kind of PHP, JavaScript, anything, I frequently find myself having errors, specifically because I always seem to forget the stupid semicolon. Anyway, let's save our progress. Now that we're going to return this to the cell or to the function, we can actually use equals get seconds inside a cell. Now, we don't actually have parameters, so it's always going to get the directions from the church going to the gym. So we're going to pretend that we just got out of church and we need to get to a racquetball session really fast. Let's see how many seconds that takes. So let's go back to our related sheet here and let's just type it anywhere because I'm not going to use these just yet. So let's see equals I'm going to say get seconds and I'm going to say uh, no parameters so I'm just going to hit enter. So it's loading it ran 1,284 seconds great it actually did but it's not able to get me the seconds from this address to the other address because it's hard coded we got to go back if you close that by the way just go to tools and go to a script editor but I still have it open alright so now let's get rid of this hard coded stuff and create some built-in variables now in the article they had origin and they had destination uh, you can use whatever variables that you like so I like to use something a little bit different I'm gonna say the from address comma to the to address so from add and to add so those are gonna be created those are things that we're gonna say cell a2 and then comma and then click on cell b2 or something like that or you could type in equals get seconds and then type an actual value and then comma and then type another value either way that's going to send the variable information to from add and send it to to add which we can utilize right now so I'm gonna copy from add and let's replace the set origin to the variable with the parameters that people are entering into the function and of course to add will copy and we will replace this text here so now whatever they put in there is gonna go here whatever they put in the function for the ending part is going to go here and it'll all just kind of work and flow from there now that we've done that let's save it and let's try that out so we have an error because we don't actually have any parameters now uh, we don't we need to have a from and a to address since we haven't sent anything to the function so let's go to minutes and let's try the first address this is where my church is and this is some random address I threw on from Zillow so let's say equals get seconds and then let's click here comma and then here and in fact for cell b2 I'm gonna hit f4 to lock that cell in permanently and whereas cell e2 we're actually just going to only want to lock in column e but we want to allow it to move left or right although the driving miles will be a different function so this will actually be just fine to copy downward for the e8 so I'm going to hit enter. So it gave me the number of seconds. This is not exactly labeled correctly yet, but it did work. If you see, uh, I'm going to copy this one more. And let's double click on this one. So it's getting the same one which we locked with the dollar signs. And now it I did copy down to E9. So now it's getting the number of seconds for both of these addresses. That's pretty good. I want to make another function called get minutes. And then we'll work on miles in just a second. So we're going to go back to our editor here let's copy this entire function here and paste it below so we're gonna make another one called get minutes from the copy and paste it function and now all we have to do really to convert this it's pretty simple to get seconds to minutes you simply divide that result by 60 so that was pretty easy right let's save our progress and try get minutes now that might be a little more effective so instead of get seconds we're gonna try get minutes and hit enter all right great so this is 22.57 minutes and going to the gym from the new address would take 18 minutes Ooh, right now I'm spoiled it takes me six minutes to go play racquetball so I don't think I would want to move there necessarily a lot of you live in much busier larger cities and you're rolling your eyes at me and that's okay we're still friends let's work on getting the number of miles for those of you who don't really care about a new home but you want to be able to figure out how long it takes to drive from one place to another so we're going to go back to our editor here and let's copy and paste these either of these functions it's fine either way so let's paste here and this time we're going to want to get 
the number of meters, which is the default distance. We'll have to convert that if we want to use miles, but either way, or you can convert that if you want to use kilometers. So we already have everything else set up. We have the from and the to, and the get directions method here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the debug.print. I think we don't need to debug anymore. This time, instead of getting the directions.routes.legs.duration, we're going to get the dot distance. And that has a different number for the distance. So the, the default is the number of meters it takes to get to that place. And of course, you guessed it, if we needed to get the number of miles, we simply divide that number right there by something like 16 or not have it written down. But let's try this really quick. Save. So equals get meters from this F4 key comma this enter and it is working all right give me 20,508 meters and you know you could convert that to kilometers by just dividing it by a thousand so while we're in the neighborhood heck with it we're going to say get km so get km that means kilometers and we take that divided by 1,000 and if my math is wrong, everybody's going to throw rocks at me, but let's try this anyways. We're going to change this to get km and hit enter. All right, so it's 20.51 kilometers. And let's do miles while we're in the neighborhood. So we're going to say get miles. I'm going to copy this one. And let's get some room here. Paste that. And we're going to say get miles. So again, all we change is duration to the word distance. And now we have some really cool stuff we can do with this. So we're going to say the distance dot value divided by 1609.34. That'll take the number of meters and convert it to the number of miles. Let's save and try that. So now get km, we're going to change to get miles and hit enter. So as you can see, you can do some pretty simple mathematics, and let's copy these down as well. All right, so if I l wanted to live here, it would take me 22 minutes to get to church and 18 minutes to get there. Jackson Walmart and Cape Walmart are almost equidistant from the, the location. Right now, I live three minutes from Walmart, so I'm super spoiled. Then here's some random restaurants, whatever. We'd be pretty close to some good eats. And if you wanted to know the mileage, you can see that here. There's so much more that you can do with these uh, maps scripts. Let's go ahead and go to Zillow really quick and just find one random address here. So we're going to search in Jackson, Missouri. All right. Let's change this to anything, any price. I just uh, picked the really expensive homes because I wanted a cool looking picture on the front. All right. So we got some random address here. Uh, 470 Harmony Lane. So let's copy and paste that and see if this still works. All right, copying, pasting, bam. All right, if I wanted to move to Harmony Lane, if I was considering that purchase, that one would be really close to the gym. Holy cow, four minutes. Ooh, racquetball every day, baby. And then, of course, 21 minutes to church. Walmart's still pretty close. All right, so anyway, as you can see, if you had your top three or four places that you would like to be ideally pretty close to, or maybe in the median, right in between your favorite places, if you're in between two cities, you could use something like this. So if you want to copy this, I'm going to make this spreadsheet available so you can take a look at the code. And if you're following along, hopefully you tried that on your own. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure and give us a like and subscribe and click that bell for notifications. And we also have a brand new private Facebook group, the Excel Ninjas, where we're trying to get a big community where it's easier for us to all communicate together and share cool examples, questions, help each other with code and problems and things like that. So we'll post a link to that as well. We're also going to post a link to the original post from Alex so that you can view that and get some reading done there as well. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody, and God bless.